Good evening. Today we'll be talking about basics of fire streams. This is a pretty big chapter, so in this one, I'm not going to get to foam. That's going to be coming down eventually. But this is just your standard, straight water streams. And some basics of why we use water. Speaking of, why do we use water? Well, it's everywhere. Pretty cheap, if not free, if you're a rural department taking out of a pond. And it's really good at absorbing heat, which is pretty much the way that water puts out fire. Put water on it, it cools it below the point where it can you know, give off gases that burn, and you put out the fire. And it requires a lot of heat to change states. So from water to steam it takes a lot of energy, which when fire has to work on converting water to steam, it drops its temperature and then Again, that's how it works. Properties of steam. Steam has a volume that is 1,700 times greater than the same volume of water. So if you put a gallon of water on a fire, it expands into steam that has the volume of 1,700. Some notes on steam, though. If the water is applied to hot surfaces it could increase the smoke layer. And it took me a while to kind of re-understand how this works. Be because the next point is if it's applied to the upper smoke layer, it can decrease the size of the smoke layer. And the key is what you're applying it to. For example, if you go in and spray water and it hits the hot ceiling, it creates a lot of steam. That steam obviously has a lot of volume, so if you create a lot of steam, it goes up into the smoke layer, and that can bring the smoke layer down, stir it up, make life more difficult for you. Bring the smoke layer down, make it hotter down where you are, that kind of thing. But if the water is applied to the smoke layer, and it turns to steam before it hits a hot surface, it can decrease the smoke layer because... The air and the smoke and all the gases up there are really hot. So as the water goes through that layer and converts to steam, it's taken heat out of the gases, and because temperature is related to volume, cooler gases take up less space. So if you can convert a bunch of water to steam up in the upper layers, you can shrink your smoke and heat layer. Because the heat from that layer is trying to turn the water to steam and has to dump a lot of its heat to do that. Versus hitting a hot surface, you create a lot of steam from the heat from that surface. So you're just adding to the already large heat layer and smoke layer. Alright, some factors that affect fire stream. Gravity, obviously. Wind, pressure, the nozzle style and how you have it adjusted, and nozzle conditions. And we'll get to water hammer here shortly. Gravity, obviously. Got my mouse. We're going to use this as my little pointer. There comes a point where no matter how you angle this, gravity's going to take over and start pulling the water back down, obviously. Wind. It's a real breezy day, you're going to have to compensate, you know, if the wind's blowing this way, you're going to have to aim over here if you want the water to hit here kind of thing. Nozzle style adjustment, obviously. Depending on how you have the nozzle set, that changes how the stream acts and travels through the air. Nozzle conditions, if the nozzle's clogged or damaged, that can affect how the stream comes out of the nozzle and how it travels. And a little test note, a fire stream is the stream of water coming out of the no from when it leaves the nozzle to where it gets wherever it's going. So this whole thing right here is the fire stream. That may show up on a test kind of thing. And water hammers in red. Anything in red and this PowerPoint is going to be special note kind of thing. When you open nozzles, 
Nice, easy, smooth motion. Because if you're slamming them open and slamming them closed, water is not compressible. So if you're flowing, you know, this much water, a lot of water, and you slam this shut, all that force from the water hitting the now closed nozzle goes back and can damage the pump and create a spike in pressure and burst hoses and makes life difficult. So just a nice, easy, smooth, open close. Don't have to be real slow and take two minutes to do it, but try to avoid, you know, slamming it open, slamming it closed. Stream size and type. So low volume streams max out at 40 gallons per minute. That's like real small wildland hose or maybe a booster reel. Real small diameter hose. One person can pretty easily handle it. Good for, you know, wildland. Maybe a little bit some smoldering trash kind of thing. Just soaking something down real quick, that kind of thing. Hand lines, that's the stuff that you're going to, you know, your two and a half nozzle, your maybe inch and three quarter, stuff where you're moving a little more. One person might be able to handle them for a little while, depending on how much water you're moving, what pressure you're at. But once you start getting to the upper levels of 350, that's your two people on the hand line, maybe even three people on the hand line, depending on how big and strong they may or may not be kind of thing. And then your master streams, those are your, what I would consider, non-movable by man kind of things. Your ladder trucks, your tower trucks, your big monitor mounted on top of the engine, stuff where you're not gonna you're not gonna control it or ground mounted monitors where you set it up and you connect two hoses to it and when you have it set up that's kind of where it stays kind of thing. Stuff you're not going to quick drag around to the other side of the building by one or two people kind of thing. And then stream sizes, or shapes. Solid fog, straight, and broken. That may mean a lot to you if you've already been a firefighter for a while. Or you're just getting into it and you're still a little bit confused. But we're just going to jump into those right now. Ooh, after our flow types. So this is your... Where? That first one, that 40 gallons per minute or less. One guy can easily handle it, hitting some brush, wildland, small nozzle, small hose, that kind of thing. So this is your hand line. This is the one we're probably going to be most familiar with. Inch and three quarter, maybe inch and a half hose, depending on which one you have, two and a half, that kind of thing. Couple, One or a couple people can move this around, drag it around pretty reasonably easy, can handle it. And this is that high flow stuff, your master stream, your deck gun, your, your truck, stuff that you or a team of people aren't really going to drag around kind of thing or handle. So solid streams. These come from smooth bore nozzles, which nozzles will come later. We're talking about streams right now. A couple little notes. Breakover is the point where forward velocity ends and the stream just kind of stops moving forward and just kind of breaks apart and rains back down. So this one is kind of aiming for this tree. So we're not really getting to the break point, I don't think. But you can see it comes out pretty, pretty solid here. And right about kind of in here, you can see it really breaks apart and it kind of starts falling back down. So this kind of the top of the arc is the breakover point where it stops kind of going forward and more or less just comes straight back down and kind of rains down. 50 PSI is kind of the usual good reach and volume kind of setting. Now, you can increase PSI and get a little more reach and maybe a little more volume out of a solid stream in a smoothbore nozzle. But then the more pressure you're pushing out is more pressure pushing back on you that you then have to fight. Because I 50 PSI, one person can pretty easily handle that all day long kind of thing. That's 
that's quite comfortable when you start getting to 90 PSI, 100 PSI. That can get kind of tiring. That's where you spray a while, all right, another guy come in and switch, that kind of thing. So you can get more out of it, but it's going to punish you more in exchange. Because nozzle pressure is kind of a one-to-one -one thing. 50 PSI means, yeah, you got 50 PSI of water coming out, but you also have 50 PSI pushing back on you that you have to maintain and control of. Fog streams. And straight streams. I wasn't sure how I broke this down, but yep, yeah, this could be fog and straight streams because it comes out of the same nozzle. Fog stream is a spray of tiny droplets which gives you the maximum amount of heat absorption because the more surface area of the water you have, the more water there is available easily to convert to steam. So if we look here, not a lot of surface area, a whole lot of surface area. These can be adjusted, obviously. So this one is a kind of creeping up there to probably a fairly large fog, or you can get a little narrow fog coming out, you know, like that, or a straight stream, which is like this guy down here. Obviously, these can be affected by wind when the pattern breaks apart, you know, 10 feet in front of you or 5 feet in front of you. The wind can blow these around pretty easily. And 100 PSI is kind of the standard. Although, look at your nozzles, because a lot of nozzles will say operate at 95 PSI or 100, that kind of thing. So, 100 is kind of the rough standard usually, but, you know, each company will say run it at X PSI or X gallons per minute and follow what your machine is telling you to do. Nozzle is telling you to do. It's straight streams on here now. Straight streams look a lot like our solid streams. And this pretty much you can get to act a lot like a solid stream, you know, reach, that kind of thing. The difference between this guy and this guy is that this straight, a solid stream, comes out of a smoothbore nozzle, which all it is is a valve, and there may be a stream shaper, which kind of helps, you know, form the the water, kind of control how it comes out of the nozzle, but it's not being broken up. Think of a solid stream like taking a garden hose and just kind of opening the end. Where you're not breaking up the pattern, you're not, you know, making the water go through, you know, a device to kind of change the pattern of how it comes out. It's just one big slug of water coming out. Your fog nozzles are like your garden nozzles where you know you may have the spray function which works kind of like this and then you may have you know the I'm trying to think of a good example another you know selection on the nozzle that makes it more of a stream like this. They're still being changed, they're still being broken up but this one is being broken out and spread out more than this one. It just depends on how much. And broken streams. These come from specialized devices, usually. They're kind of like the middle ground, where they absorb more heat than solid stream. Obviously, you got a lot more pattern here. And a greater reach than a fog stream. You can see, because they come out in you know, pretty solid little streams here, that's going to reach a little farther than you know just a wide fog, like in that first picture from the last slide. And these are good for confined space fires. So, attics, basements, this is a piercing nozzle. So, you know, engine fire on a car, you can grab this thing, punch it through the hood of the car, open it up, without having to open the whole hood, and knock down the fire pretty good with that. I said it can be created by deflecting. I kind of skipped that one, because... You can get the effect of a broken stream by taking your straight or your solid stream and hitting a wall and kind of breaking it up. Because that's essentially what this does. It's just... It's a way to do it kind of thing. Smoothbore nozzles. These run at low pressure. Again, that's that, you know, 50... 90 if you really want to reach something kind of thing. 
And as a result, they're low pressure. They're easily kinked. These are ones where you're flowing water and you're holding onto the nozzle and you want to move and spray in a different direction and you almost kink the hose off kind of thing. You can kink it, honestly, just about as easy as you can kink off a garden hose. They're less prone to clog with debris and sand and silt, you know, rural departments sucking out of a pond, that kind of thing. Because aside from the valve, there's no screens in here, there's no, you know, things that has to flow around and through really to make to shape the stream into a fog or straight stream. So if you got, you know, a big you know, piece of silt or a little pebble or something, it's just gonna pass through and the world's good, didn't even notice kind of thing. Can be used with calves, which is compressed air foam system, which not this PowerPoint. Maybe. Eh, real quick top. Real quick hit on that. CAFS is mounted to the fire truck. And basically, it lets you run foam through your, you know, pre-connected off-the-truck hose lines. And the reason why this one is specific to CAFS is because of the compressed air part of that. If you were just to hook up an old-school foam adductor to this and try to run foam out of here, it's not going to get air mixed into it. It's not going to work. It's not going to foam up because there's no air mixed in with the foam. But with calves, where they put air into the hose line with the foam and the water and all that, it'll come out pre-aerated so you can get decent foam out of a smoothbore, which is why the calves is important for smoothbore nozzles. And we'll touch on other nozzles here in a minute and why they're different. And then flow rate tip and is tip and pressure dependent. These guys are your different tips. So like this one may be inch and three quarter. And this one may be inch and a half. And this one may be inch size tips. And you can keep stepping down to like real tiny stuff like quarter inch tips if you really, really wanted to. And so the more tips you stack on, the more reach you may get. You may get less volume out of it because you're trying to force, you know, this much water out of a hole really small kind of thing. So you may get more reach, but you may lose the amount of water you're getting out. And then pressure dependent. Obviously, the more pressure you put behind it, the more reach you probably can get and more flow. Fog nozzles. These are the ones that create your solid or your straight stream and your fog stream. Come with adjustable patterns. They can be used with foam. And then there are some couple different versions of these basic fog nozzles. They're adjustable pattern nozzle in which the rate of discharge is delivered at a set pressure and nozzle setting. That's the one where it says run at 95 PSI at the nozzle. So if the nozzle says runs at, runs at 95 PSI, you have 95 PSI of water coming in here, and that's its sweet spot where it's designed to get, you know, the amount of water it's rated for, decent pattern shapes, that kind of thing. Constant gallonage. Those nozzles discharge a constant rate through, throughout its range of patterns at a designated pressure. So what that does is the pressure comes in, we're just going to use 95 PSI because that's easy to remember and keeps everything kind of e even across the board. 95 PSI comes in and it's designed to make sure that the gallon is the same. So if you got to open it to a straight stream, it'll be an slowing down because it's going to get confusing. Let's say that this is stamped 95 PSI, 100 gallons a minute. 95 PSI comes in, and no matter where you set this, you know, straight stream, fog stream, on a constant gallonage nozzle, it's going to be that 100 gallons a minute coming out. Because it's at its 95 PSI. That's later. Don't get there yet. Constant pressure. Again, adjustable fog nozzle in which the pressure remains pretty much the same throughout its range of discharge rates. 
these are the ones. This is not one of those. I'm using this as the example picture. But they'll have those will have an extra like little dial selector back here. And it'll be like let's say 100 psi. Now the rate of discharge rate the discharge rate thing is there'll be another selector here and it'll be like 100 gpm, 90 gpm, 95, 105, 110. There'll be a selection. And by you know, turning your dial to whatever amount of water you can get out, you can kind of control the amount of flow you're getting out of here, depending on what you set it to. That just changes how much water the little valve in here lets through. And then constant and select gallonage. Just kind of reading here, because honestly, this is the kind of stuff where you're really not going to mess with, so I'm refreshing myself kind of as I teach. The book is saying, because we do everything by the book, because that's how we kind of learn, a constant discharge rate fog nozzle with a feature that allows manual adjustment of the orifice to affect a predetermined discharge rate. Oh, that's what I just told you, where you can select the amount, you know, 100 GPM, 105 GPM, that thing. Constant pressure. I'm going to get some hate for this. I'm trying to tell you what something is, and I, I barely understand it. Okay. Constant pressure. That is designed to, no matter how you set this, the same pressure is coming out. Based on, you know, whatever pattern it is. So, 95 PSI is 95 PSI, whether it's straight stream or a big fog pattern. Constant slash select gallonage is the one where I was saying you have the dial back here and it's you can select it and change you know, the size of the opening in here and get a little less gallons, a little more gallons and kind of fine tune that. I think I've seen one of those once. They're out there. All these are out there. But the ones I usually see are your, you know, your constant Gallonage your basic fog, the ones where you set it, where you run it at 95 PSI up here, and you get your whatever out, and it is what it is. Broken stream nozzles. Cellar nozzles and piercing nozzles. Right. Don't know what happened. This little stuff in the parentheses belongs up with cellar nozzles. Just a little Put the Bresnan and Rockwood up here with cellar nozzle. And then piercing nozzles. Piercing nozzles are these guys. they got a sharpened tip. And they're designed to poke through a wall or the hood of a car or the side of an airplane. That kind of thing. And you open it back here. And then water comes out and makes life good. That was the one I showed you where the guy's on the bridge. Where I talked about being able to, you know... Put it through the hood of a car. That's a piercing nozzle. Cylinder nozzles, there's two styles. Bresnan nozzles and Rockwood pipe nozzles. This one here is the Bresnan nozzle. Water comes in, goes through all these, it acts kind of like a big sprinkler. And this spins around and sprays in little streams of water everywhere and makes everything better. And Rockwood pipe. I couldn't find a full picture of it. But this is the head for one of them. The different design, more of a fog pattern looking thing. And that would be attached to a long, like, long handle, T handle looking thing, where you can, you know, put, put a hole in the floor, put the nozzle down in the basement, and then open it up and spray water everywhere. The reason I included the two types is because that's one of those things where you may get, hey, go get me the Bresnan nozzle, especially the new people, you know. New guy getting messed with, and this is the kind of thing where they're test. You may be a little bit of a you know a test. How much do you really know, kind of thing. So that's the Bresnan nozzle. That's the Rockwood nozzle. Or some people may ask, you know, what what's the Bresnan nozzle? What, what does that do? Eh, you know, it's for cellar file, cellar fires, that kind of thing. Just a little knowledge that you may see once in a while. 
specialty nozzles. Now, there isn't really a specialty nozzle class, but I think at least this guy's really cool over here. I'll talk about that in a minute and why that's on the PowerPoint. But this is kind of a cheating for a specialty nozzle because all this is, I was talking about fog nozzles and foam. This is basically a big tube that you can clamp onto the end of a fog nozzle. It's got cuts back here in this ring. So as you're flowing water and foam mixture out, it's sucking air in back here, adding air to the foam and water and making your nice foam blanket, nice fluffy foam. And depending on how much foam you want, you can get, you know, little short stubby ones, or really long ones, like this one. And the size is all just changing how much air gets really mixed into the foam. So a longer one will give you fluffier foam, a shorter one will give you a little bit, you know, less fluffy, bubbly foam, that kind of thing. And if you just want a fog nozzle, you can just flip the little catch, pull it off, and then you just have your regular old fog, fog nozzle. This guy over here is the flip tip. It's my task force tips. I'm, I try to avoid, you know, name brands and stuff and that kind of thing, but I really want one to play with. Because, as the name says, in this picture, it's got, I played with one once. It's got a little locking collar. This is a better example down here, because you can obviously get a smoothbore tip, you know, so if you want, you know, a nice wide, you know, solid stream, you can flip the tip down. Or if you want a little more reach, kind of think you can put a couple tips on here and snap it up. I think the cooler part about it is you can have a fog nozzle attachment. So you can have your straight stream, your fog stream, whatever. And you can go, huh, oh, I want a solid stream. And instead of having to shut down a hose line and get a, you know, smoothbore nozzle, you just... Shut your nozzle off, pull, unlatch the little collar, flip the fog nozzle down, and now you got a nice smooth bore. I think it's the coolest thing. They're expensive. I don't care. I want to buy one and play with it because not really a teachable thing. Obviously, kind of maybe a waste of time telling you about how much I think these are cool, but I think they're cool. All right, and control valves for nozzles. There's ball valves, slide valves and rotary control ones. Bow valves are the most common. Those are the ones you can, you look in the base of your nozzle and you pull the lever and you can see the little like ball in there rotate and there's a spot where it's, you know, closed, it's blanked off, water can't get through, and then when it's open, you can see it, you know, through the ball and the other end of the nozzle. Those are the common ones. Slide valves. Now, I couldn't find a picture of a slide valve. In fact, I couldn't really find a good picture of ball 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 valve ball valve either. How they work. But obviously, a ball valve, like I said, is you know, ball in it with a hole in it, and depending on how you have the handle set, water gets in or out. Slide valve is a little different. That one, there's a little cone and a little sleeve. And when the nozzle's closed, that sleeve is pressed up against the cone, and water can't get through. But when you open the valve, the little sleeve slides backwards, and then water can get, you know, past the sleeve and around the cone, and then, you know, out the nozzle. That's all it is. And then rotary control. That's this guy here, where you twist it. Open is this way, closed is, you know, the opposite way. And depending on you know, how far you open it, you can get more of a fog stream or a straight stream, depending on how far you twist it open or closed. These are ones, these are common to find, you know, the apartment build, the old apartment building with the little fire station in the stairwell with the hose in it and that kind of thing. That's where you find these a lot of times. Now I know, these also used to be really popular now, 60s, 70s, 50s, 40s. That's kind of like, Fire nozzle number one kind of thing. That's the old school. They're still out there. You can find them. In fact, they still make them. 
But nowadays, with the fog nozzles, smoothbore nozzles, that kind of thing, these are more for your, your real lines, your wildland fire, low pressure kind of things, where walking along, twist it open, soak down the brush pile, shut it off again, that kind of thing. But you can find these in, you know, two and a half inch, inch and three quarter, real line size, that, that kind of thing. So, popular at one point, kind of faded to more specialty use, but they're still out there. Nozzle operation. Kind of some key points. You want a st nice stable stance, because, you know, depending on if you got 100 gallons per minute coming out of one, you got, or 100 PSI coming out, you got 100 PSI fighting you. Securely cradle the hose and hold the nozzle, and then with fire nozzles, open again smooth to prevent that water hammer and completely. Fire nozzles, there's different, you know, points in here, so you can open it, you can click it open a little bit, and it'll be quarter open, or click it open, and it'll be, you know, halfway open. But by doing that, you're creating turbulence in here, and you're restricting your water flow. So, if you do that, you'll get a real kind of garbagey stream coming out of here, because it's not the amount of water you wanted, and it's got a lot of turbulence and being broken up, trying to get through this partially open valve. So with fire nozzles, open or closed. Now we're going to look at these because there's some points. And we're not here to smack talk anybody because, you know, we're all here to learn together. But just some things looking at this that I like. Some stuff I'm not a fan of. It's not wrong. It's different. But the thing is, there's a lot of people out there. And this is all dependent just on, you know, where you are, who trained you, that kind of thing that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about this one, this picture over here first. You can see that we got, you know, our straight stream coming out. And they're using the pistol grip, which is this orange guy here. Just a little extra, you know, holding point on the nozzle. Some nozzles have them, some don't. But they're using one hand on the pistol grip and then another hand on the bale which is the little lever that opens and closes the nozzle. Me, personally, am not a fan of this maneuver because you can see the way she's holding it. And there's some, you know, kind of mind imagining you have to go along with me. Imagine trying to hold, you know, 100 PSI coming out of here, back here like this. When you're holding onto the pistol grip like this, or, you know, with this hand kind of wrapping around and trying to hold the pistol grip with this hand back here, if you kind of imagine it, you got all this pressure kind of right here. And you're trying to hold all this pressure kind of with your forearms. You can't really get a lot of... You, know, you can't really get on top of it. You're kind of trying to fight it right kind of in your armpit. So if you want to you know, spray, you know, to the left of ways, or you have to spray, you know, down, or, you know, spray an upper window from your position, and you try to change where your nozzle's pointing, you can't just point the nozzle. You have to rotate your body or angle your body up or down, and all the... Nozzle reaction is kind of right in your armpit, where you can't really get a lot of control. So you're, she is fighting, you know, all this nozzle reaction, and can't really aim her the stream really well, because she doesn't have a lot of, you know, to play with here. This guy should be, theory, perfect world helping her. Because with two people on a hose line, or two or three, or how many other people, people back here should be, you know, holding onto this hose nice and tight and trying to help fight that 100 PSI or whatever that she's fighting with. To try and take that pressure off of her. Because with, you know, loose hand on the top, kind of kneeling, 
she's fighting 100 PSI, and he's really fighting no PSI. Again, not trying to beat on people, rip on people, but stuff to consider. These guys over here are doing more of what I like to do. Yeah, they got pistol grips, but they're holding the, the nozzle, you know, farther out here, you know, arm's length away. Now these guys, you know, 100 PSI, for example, we'll use this picture. He's not full in water, but it's a little bit, eh, they're all about the same. 100 PSI coming out. Now, if you want to, instead of holding the pistol grip, you can control, you know, the, the nozzle force back here. He's got all this extra length to play with. So now if he has to, you know, aim to the left, aim to the second floor, or to the right, wherever, instead of trying to, you know, twist your whole upper body, you can just kind of move your hand, you know, swing the nozzle whichever way you want to go, and now you're spraying in that direction. You don't have to twist your whole body and try to fight around. And plus, you have all this space. You can get your arms out in front of you real well and really kind of lock the nozzle in there and try and have a little bit better time fighting your 100 PSI or whatever. And then their backup guys, you can see one ba one guy's foot back here and this guy here, they're probably, looking at it, kneeling on the hose, really putting their weight into him, so this guy on the nozzle can kind of lean back into him. This guy's, you know, pinning the, no the hose line to the ground and really helping fight that nozzle. We're actually keeping it from moving backwards, so between the two of them, this guy doesn't have a whole lot to fight with. Like, looking at this guy, who's flowing water, he's probably, again, got the same kind of setup with the guy behind him. Got his leg out in front of him, it's just kind of nice, easy grip on the hose line and spraying around. And just looking at the two, this guy looks a lot more comfortable and in control than over here. This is the kind of thing where the nozzle starts pushing back into you and starts, you know, spraying up in a weird angle. And you have to shut down, readjust. These guys, even 100 PSI and 100 PSI, are probably a little more comfortable and a little bit less, you know, sore after f spraying water for a while than this setup would. Both valid. I've had instructors say that they love the pistol grip and it's their best friend in the world. And I've had instructors who say, I would take... I would love to take all these off, you know, the nozzles as they would come in, because all they do is create bad habits and encourage this kind of thing where you're holding the pistol grip and suddenly the nozzle's in your armpit. That's a bit extreme if you ask me. I think, personally, I'd like to kind of, me, keep my one hand, kind of do a little bit of both, where I have a hand on the pistol grip, but I have the hose wide here where I keep my arm nice and straight and keep, you know, the web of my between my thumb and my pointer kind of up and in here a nice grip on the pistol grip and then I can, you know, angle the tip around or down or left or right but I still have my whole, you know, arm really kind of locked out nice and solid trying to f fight that 100 PSI or whatever, so I'll use the pistol grip but I try really hard to keep it from you know, pushing me to where the nozzle's in my armpit and I'm kind of fighting a losing battle. Again, not saying this is wrong. Depending on how they're taught, if they're just going through fire school and never been on a hose line before, you don't know any better, I I almost lost a hand line in school doing this kind of thing, so... You know, whichever. Nozzle care. You gotta check gaskets for wear, if they're cracked, if they're missing... And if that's the case, replace them, look for damage, make sure they're clean, so they're not covered in mud or dirt or soot or anything. Check for ease of operation, make sure you can, you know, rotate it through f straight stream or fog pattern all the way, it's not, not all gritty, or you can open the valve nice and easy so you don't have to really, f you know, like, fight it to get it open or closed. Make sure all the parts are present and secure. It's like that pistol grip. Make sure it's not all loose and rattling around. Make sure it's tight. And if you have a fog nozzle and there's some little debris in there or something, some grit, use the flush setting. Try and flush it out if you have to. If not, you may have to take the nozzle off or get in there and clean it out. But 
Flush shutting is helpful. Thank you for watching. Got any ideas for another video or something you'd like to see? Or if I said something wrong, let me know. I'd like to hear about it. Thank you.